Good day, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Welcome to the webinar on audio basics for IT professionals. Let me introduce the team. Today's presenters are Anish Samuel. I'm from the uh, system application team at Shure Middle East and Africa. Joining me is Ritendra Podar from the system application team, Shure Middle East and Africa. Let's go over uh, some ground rules. Uh, today's webinar is on BlueJeans platform. Participants' video and microphones will be muted. So please ensure that it remains uh, muted throughout the uh, webinar. We would encourage you to, uh, to wear uh, headphones or earphones for better results, as audio samples could be played as part of the webinar. Please type your questions in the chat or Q&A box, and we will uh, answer at the end of the session. Thank you in advance. A few words on the webinar setup that we have. As we are aware that uh, many people are currently working from home and most of our work are involving conference calls uh, via Skype, BlueJeans, Teams, etc. Uh, we would like to emphasize that you know clear audio is a must for effective communication, especially when, when the, uh, the, the call can go on for hours and hours. So in order to increase productivity of the conversation, and in order to be uh, clear, uh, we, we would like to uh, encourage going ahead with uh, you know great quality audio products similar to one uh, similar to what uh, Shure has been producing from the last 90 plus years. And uh, in order to have the effective webinar, uh, we have uh, set up our home office with with the Shure Motive product line, uh, which we'll be discussing in slightly more detail in the next slides. Right now, I'm having a Shure MV51 microphone connected via USB with my laptop. I have a headphone and a USB camera connected as well. My colleague uh, Ritendra has a Shure MV5 digital condenser microphone connected via USB with a Shure SRH145 uh, connected and a USB web webcam for video. Some key features of Motive, uh, let's discuss about it. Uh, the setup is, is very quick. It supports plug and play. There are no drivers required. Uh, there is a 3.5 mm headphone output uh, built in, uh, and it's also compatible with smartphones, PCs, and Macs. It has a DSP built in with uh, uh, features like limiter, compressor, and equalizer. So the MV5 has three DSP preset modes, which is vocals, flat, and instrument modes. Uh, MV51 has five DSP preset modes, so speech, singing, flat mode, uh, acoustic instrument mode, loud. The, all these uh, features are uh, all, all these modes of uh, uh, sound uh, is being uh, accepted by the MV51, and it also offers uh, seamless integration with AV uh, appliances like Soft Codex, Skype, BlueJeans, Teams, etc. The MV5 offers flexible mounting options uh, with its microphone's standard threading. And the MV51 offers uh, flexible mounting as well, along with its uh, standard threading. It also has an additional uh, you know, uh, touch screen front panel, which, uh, which is highly durable and uh, you know, it ensures the longevity of the product. Moving on to the course, uh, the purpose of today's webinar is to give you the experience and knowledge of how to ensure uh, you know, uh, uh, great quality sound is, is achieved in your typical uh, business situations. It is also to bridge the gap between your own IT background and the world of professional audio. So it will actually help you adapt to both uh, legacy meetings and conferencing equipment, and also with the latest designs. So the agenda of uh, today's webinar is as followed. Uh, sound system basic. Uh, the merging of AV and IT, understanding concerns about audio on the network, and finally, the best practice and recommendations. So to, in order to reiterate, this webinar is actually targeted for uh, IT professional. So hence, uh, the module one or the sound system basics is a quick recap of our first webinar, uh, which we had started uh, at the uh, start of this month. Uh, and why we are focusing on this webinar is because uh, the basics are a stepping stone to the rest of the modules. So this webinar would be the last in the series, which will be focusing on the basics of audio. 
So the, the webinar, which is scheduled for the following months would be more in depth and product oriented. It will also uh, like cover aspects of, uh, you know, technical aspects and functionality, use cases, software, you know, uh, the configurations of the software, best uh, practices, recommendations, demos, etc. cetera, uh, you know, uh, throughout the sure product line. So please, uh, you know, stay tuned for the upcoming webinars. Uh, we move on to the introduction and the important of, uh, importance of sound quality. As you may know, you know, the communication is a fundamental part of the human experience and we do it continuously throughout our day. Communication helps shape uh, the way we think about things, ideas and people. So over time, you know, technological advancements and uh, societal changes have shifted the way we communicate, particularly in the workplace. The meetings of today are highly collaborative and include a mix of voice, video and live content. So these are all shared between groups of people across the world. So technically, uh, today it is quite impossible uh, to separate our communication from the technology front. So as an AV or an IT professional, your goal should be able to provide sound quality that would aid in effective communication. So over the past 90 years, as you may know, Sure uh, has been dealing with great quality audio products and Sure knows a lot about creating a good quality sound. And we, we want to help you do the same or achieve the same. So it is important to realize that sound quality is not an absolute term. Uh, you know, it, it totally depends on the context. So. So what uh, comprises of good sound uh, will be different uh, for music and will be different for speech. So in this particular uh, webinar, we'll be focusing on creating uh, good quality uh, speech and intelligible speech. So moving on uh, to the importance of uh, sound quality, uh, we talk about music. So music is all about fidelity and uh, achieving great sound quality in music requires the accurate reproduction of the entire frequency range of the instruments. So this, this particular combination or the harmonious combination of the different frequencies can uh, provide, you know, uh, music of, of much beauty. And it is, it is further uh, heightened by the reverberation within a room. So reverberation is actually uh, good for the uh, music. But if you take speech, speech is totally about intelligibility, which is, which is, uh, uh, a whole different animal. So the goal of intelligibility is the easy understanding of words being spoken. While it seems that it, it, it is it is quite easy, the fact that the interference from unwanted sounds can have a profound effect on our ability to accurately, you know, perceive speech. So the enemies of great sound are, are technically uh, many. So our goal uh, is to give you the basic tools and uh, know-how of how to achieve, uh, you know, good quality sound with a minimum of theory and math, and also focus on, uh, you know, practical techniques. So we move on to the room, which is quite an important or a critical factor in a sound system design and performance. So the type of the room, how large is the room, how many people uh, will participate uh, in, in, in a particular meeting, what are they going to do? It all determines what is needed in the room, you know, uh, when it comes to audio intelligibility. So in addition, uh, the acoustic characteristics of the room will also have a significant impact on what approaches to, to microphone placement, etc., would be uh, practical for that particular room. So sound reinforcement uh, is, is, is actually defined as a system for making, you know, the sound louder and delivering it to a, uh, to a much larger audience. So in, in, in terms of meetings and conferences, you know, our primary interest would be uh, in, in sound uh, reproduction of the human uh, vocal range. So in meeting rooms, uh, technically sound reinforcement becomes more important when, uh, the, when the people, uh, you know, when they are sitting at one end of the room, they cannot comfortably hear what is going on from the other end where the speaker is standing. So this might be due to the size of the room, the seat, seating layout or the acoustic conditions. So it can be for a variety of reasons. So this, this particular webinar is actually designed to give you, uh, you know, basic information on how to make sure that the room is ready uh, to have uh, the audio equipment and how the audio equipment can, uh, can complement each other to, to give you the desired results. 
So we touch upon the topic of uh, the AB conferencing. So AB conferencing is actually uh, when one group of participants, uh, you know, sitting in one room, uh, which is called as the near end, uh, you know, they have a conference with another group sitting at a remote location, uh, you know, which is called as the far end. So audio with high intelligibility is technically required for the, both the near ends and the far end, but you know, as a as an IT professional or a AV professional, you'll be only able, be able to control the audio that you send out. So what you hear is, uh, you know, what is being controlled by the other end or at the far end. So uh, you need to really make sure that uh, the 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 particular room that you're using and the uh, audio equipment are complementing each other to get you that desired results on on what audio you're sending out to the far end. So room acoustics and intelligibility, uh, each room has an acoustic signature. So the size, shape, furnishings, and physical materials, you know, they combine to give you how uh, a particular sound behaves in that space. So the more the reflective the surfaces uh, are within the room, the more the lively or the reverberant it can sound. So say for example, if the room is larger and the uh, the acoustic pathways are longer, because the uh, because of the size of the room, it will create more delay, and you know much more opportunities for intelligibility issues can happen. So uh, rooms with a lot of absorptive materials such as carpeted floors and uh, you know furniture, upholstered furniture and all, they might help minimize the reflective sound. So which which can support you in preserving intelligibility. So uh, it is also very important uh, uh, where you position the microphones and the loudspeakers. So it is a it is a critical component in in maximizing the intelligibility and also avoiding feedback, which we'll be discussing in the in next slides. So moving on to the sound system basics, we touch upon the purpose of a sound system. So there are three reasons to have a good sound uh, system. The first is sound reinforcement. So in order to make the sound uh, louder so that the people who are far away from the talker can uh, you know hear clearly. The second is transmission to send the audio to another location so that the listener can hear it. The transmission can be like one way or like a radio broadcast or like two way like a video conference. So the third and the most uh, important part is, is to record to capture the audio in a format you know that can be replayed later or preserved for historical reasons. What are the goals of a sound system? So regardless of its purpose, a sound system has three goals. First, to ensure audibility. Can you hear me uh, properly? That's the question. So that, you know, audibility will ensure that you can hear me properly. Second is intelligibility. Can you understand me? You know, whatever I'm speaking, can you understand me properly? And the third is to preserve fidelity. So that the sound is not annoying or fatiguing. You know, it should be relatively pleasant and people should be able to lock on to what the speaker is trying to convey. So moving on to the basics of a sound system elements. Uh, the sound system used for a typical sound reinforcement or an AV conferencing, you know, has like uh, four or five different, uh, you know, elements in it. The first is the source. So typically like a person who is speaking into a microphone. Um, then the microphone that uh, see the microphone is a transducer that that uh, converts one form of energy to another. So basically, the acoustical energy uh, of of the sound of the of the speaker is being converted to an electrical audio signal. Then comes the mixer. You know, a, a, ro a particular room can have multiple microphones or you know uh, any other source audio. So when in case uh, you want to mix a microphone signal along with uh, another microphone signal or uh, you know, a separate uh, program source, a mixer is being used. Uh, so th the next component is actually signal processing equipment, you know, that that actually improves the audio by eliminating, uh, uh, you know, issues like echo, you know, reducing it, it helps in reducing noise, compensating for level variations, and a lot of things. So finally, there is uh, amplifiers and spe loudspeakers, which converts the audio signal back to the acoustic energy so that it can be heard by the listeners. So this is a pictorial representation. Uh, the sound source is being picked up by the mixer. 
and uh, you know it is being mixed by uh, the other sources as well present within the room and it is further sent to the audio processor uh, where uh, you know you can process the signal by doing equalization compression feedback suppression etc further sent to the amplifier and then routed to the uh, loudspeakers uh, to be converted back to the acoustical energy okay so uh, nowadays you can see that the mixer and the audio processor you know they, they can be a, a one device uh, so one device is capable of doing uh, both like the Shure P300 uh, a little bit about the physical design of a microphone uh, there are different form factors for a microphone based on their applications you know so first is handheld so uh, why handheld so handheld microphones are actually ideal for presenting or performing but it is not uh, you know quite convenient for a, a conference room because you know when you are holding a microphone it, it it is not quite practical uh, and you know setting up microphone stands would would would, would not be uh, uh, looking elegant or it will be uh, obstructive uh, next is uh, body pack there are various body packs uh, they are designed to have uh, very small and unobstructive uh, uh, you know uh, features uh, because it will keep the users hands free uh, the the advantage of uh, having a body worn microphone is that they maintain a constant distance between the presenter's mouth and the microphone so your your gain level is more or less uh, constant going on to the boundary microphone they are quite common in in conference room due to their low profile design and uh, you know it has other functions like mute switch and led indicators and it can also uh, you know support in uh, covering uh, one or like uh, a couple of people at the same time next is the gooseneck microphone you know uh, see the gooseneck microphone is also uh, commonly seen in conference room so they are designed uh, to actually overcome some of the challenges with with boundary microphone you know such as like if a person is using a laptop the laptop screen can uh, actually cover the speaker uh, you know speaker uh, when he's speaking and it might not reach the uh, boundary microphone that's where uh, gooseneck uh, you know comes into uh, in a much more uh, you know helpful design because the long stem uh, makes it uh, uh, the makes the microphone element closer to the people who are speaking and it also provides excellent gain before feedback and uh, you know uh, additional benefit of uh, uh, you know reaching uh, over a laptop screen or a writing surface it, it provides that next comes the array microphones uh, like the sure mx910 ceiling mic uh, array and the mx310 table array microphone you know it includes multiple independently configurable channels in a single unit so if you see the mxa uh, 310 has up to four channels with different polar pattern presets for uh, each uh, you know channels and if you see the mxa 910 it provides up to eight channels in adjustable steerable lobes which are highly directional so the last uh, you know the form factor we would like to discuss is the conferencing microphones with the speakers so these are like the hybrid models so these are used where uh, acoustical challenges are present like you know within a very large space like a auditorium or a parliament or something like that you know where a typical sound reinforcement system cannot fulfill the uh, the requirements of a conference because uh, individual speakers will will give you uh, that additional functionality and an individual microphone will give you that uh, uh, you know additional functionality of a personalized conference additionally it can also provide you agenda management voting uh, you know interpretation identity verification etc and and the solution uh, is is also scalable moving on to the microphone characteristics there are a few uh, characteristics uh, uh, to consider when you are choosing a microphone so technically uh, the frequency response and the directionality is is, is some of the key uh, you know characteristics that are to be uh, followed the frequency response is actually uh, defined as the range of sound that uh, a particular microphone can reproduce you know and how its its output varies within uh, that range so the the frequency response is one of the most uh, significant factors uh, in determining how uh, a signature of a microphone is so 
typically it, it can give you a response curve within a 20 hertz to a 20 kilohertz range. So the, the two most uh, common types of, uh, you know, frequency responses are, are a flat response and a shaped response or a tailored response. So uh, the second important and, uh, you know, uh, important uh, microphone characteristics is directionality. It is also called as like uh, the polar pattern. And the directionality determines how the microphone responds to a sound from different directions. So uh, there are two uh, main types of, uh, you know, uh, directionality. One is omnidirectional and one is unidirectional. And the second one is unidirectional or simply directional. So what is omnidirectional? So omnidirectional uh, microphones are microphones that pick up sounds with equal gain from all sides. Uh, so regardless of the direction of the microphone, it, it, it is picking up with equal gain. So whether the user uh, speaks into a microphone from the front, uh, back, left, or the rear side, you know, the microphone will record the signals with equal gain. So that's what is called as a unidirectional microphone. When you move on to the directional or uh, unidirectional microphone, the unidirectional microphone has maximum pickup in one specified direction, which is called as the on axis. And uh, it becomes less sensitive when the sound source gets further off axis. So technically, the null point of the uh, of the microphone uh, is is actually re uh, you know referred to as the rejection point of the of the signal of the audio signal. So as the pattern becomes more and more directional, the the off axis points uh, you know it shifts from the rear of the microphone to the sides. Uh, you can, uh, there are different uh, directional polar patterns like cardioid, supercardioid, and low bar, you know. So it, it, it offers excellent rejection of unwanted uh, noise. So uh, now we are going to discuss about the uh, uh, range, microphone range. So whichever microphone you choose, you know, may, you have to make sure that it has to be positioned correctly for better results. So the critical distance is, uh, is you know, is a major factor. Uh, that you have to keep in mind where you know, the critical distance is actually the distance at which the direct sound that uh, when a person is speaking, his sound travels directly and the ambient noise and reverberation are of equal intensity. So, uh, so what is direct sound? Direct sound, when somebody is speaking directly, his signal sh uh, travels the shortest path into the microphone. That is direct sound. And the ambient noise and the reverberation are actually factors outside. Uh, uh, the sound signal. So say, for example, if, if a person is speaking, his sound is getting reflected from the rooms, uh, you know, reflective surfaces, and it comes back uh, to the microphone. So when you take critical distance, it is actually uh, a distance at which the direct sound and the ambient noise or reverberation are of equal intensity. The, the, the whole idea is, like, if the microphone is, is placed beyond the critical distance, or farther from a talker, the speech quality picked up will be very poor. So this poor sound quality, you know, uh, it can be often described as echoey or uh, reverberant or, you know, uh, feeling like uh, you're, you're standing at the bottom of a barrel and, and speaking. So the talker's words will not be uh, very clear. Uh, it will be quite hard to understand. So to estimate the critical distance of a microphone in its surrounding environment, you know, we, we can take the example of an omnidirectional microphone and determine it as the starting point and give it as a value one, say for example, value one. So as the microphone pattern becomes more directional, so say for example, you go to cardioid, it becomes more directional and the value increases. So it, it will technically give you uh, what you say as a more range. So, uh, you know, as the value increases, a directional microphone uh, rejects unwanted so uh, sound, you know, outside the uh, pattern pickup area. And, uh, you know, it gives you excellent rejection of uh, the unwanted noise. So the different polar patterns, you know, it keeps on increasing uh, uh, in terms of uh, the, the critical factor. And it gives you a more uh, distance where you can place the microphone and, uh, you know, uh, as the microphone goes on more directional. So if you see the uh, the array microphone, it can give you uh, four times the, the range of a uh, omnidirectional microphone, technically. Moving on to the inverse square law. 
So the sound waves within a room uh, or within a space are governed by the inverse square law. So uh, as shown in this particular pictorial, you know, a person sitting, you know, uh, 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 and and speaking. When you place microphone strategically, like uh, you place one microphone at one feet, then you double the distance at two feet, then four feet, and then uh, eight feet like that. So what happens is. The microphone, uh, uh, you know, when it picks up the signal at a particular intensity at one feet, uh, when you double the distance, the microphone uh, will pick it up at six dB less, lesser than uh, what he has pick, picked it up at uh, one feet. So technically, you know, a microphone doesn't have something uh, which is called as a microphone reach. It, it just picks up uh, or it just responds to the sound waves at its location. So basically, when uh, the distance is doubled, uh, the microphone pickup actually drops, or the signal signal uh, uh, drops by six dB for each doubling of distance. We have already discussed about the direct and the indirect uh, ambient sound. So when when sound wave actually leaves uh, source, they spread out in different directions. So the direct sound actually travels the shortest path towards the microphone. And the indirect sound is actually reflected off the reflected surfaces, and it 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 also will be at a lower level, you know, because the room might have uh, or the reflected uh, surfaces might have uh, you know absorbed some of the acoustical energy. So this particular delay or the reflected sound, you know, it mixes with mixes with the direct sound, and it alters the frequency response and the tonal characteristics of the speech. So rooms with technically hard reflective surfaces like glass or concrete will tend to create, you know, a muddy or indistinct or hollow sound. So it will reduce the intelligibility and also increase the listener fatigue. The so callers, you know, you might have experienced like callers often complain that, uh, you know, people, you know, standing or speaking in uh, in such rooms, they speak as if they are uh, within a box or uh, or within a barrel. You know, the sound will uh, appear hollow. So imagine uh, uh, rooms with soft absorbent uh, surfaces. You know uh, they they'll always have a higher ratio of direct to indirect sound because the uh, the reverberations are less, and uh, it it is always uh, you know uh, it will always improve the intelligibility and make uh, listening uh, more pleasant. So our whole aim is to increase the direct to uh, direct sound to reflected ratio. The direct sound uh, uh, should be much higher. And the reflected uh, uh, sound should be as minimized as possible by the treating the room or, you know, uh, acoustically managing the room. So noise. So what is noise? So anything that interferes with a uh, desired sound source, like a person speaking, is called as an unwanted noise. So it can be, uh, you know, uh, from a variety of uh, factors. Like it can be from light fixtures, HVAC, or, you know, or sounds from outside the room. And also from from meeting participants, like you know, typing or shuffling of papers or buzzing smartphones or footsteps, something like that. So it is all unwanted sound, and you know, uh, modest level of background noises are acceptable and inevitable also. But depending on the intended use of the space and the excess noise, you know, it can degrade the, the speech intelligibility. So like reflected sound, the ambient noise level also should be relatively consistent. You know, throughout the room, but the direct sound, uh, you know, uh, from the source decreases with distance. So the noise actually will be relatively constant, and uh, the person who is speaking or the sound that is coming from the speaker, it decreases with distance. So that uh, you know, in in such rooms, when you move the microphone far away, the the ratio of speech to noise decreases, and uh, it reduces intelligibility, which is not. Uh, Designed, which is not actually designed. So moving on to gain. So in audio terms, uh, gain refers to an increase in signal level or sound pressure level, which is usually measured in decibels or dB. So uh, it is actually uh, described how much louder the signal uh, or the sound is within a room when the sound system is turned on versus how much loud. Uh, you know uh, the uh, the the sound is within a room when the system is turned off. So how the sound system improves your uh, audio 
is what is uh, being considered in gain. Moving on to feedback, I know it is a very common uh, uh, phenomenon that you see uh, in, uh, in your day-to-day -day life. So it is like an acoustic uh, phenomenon where a sound signal is actually amplified and recycled back into an audio chain by the loudspeaker. So uh, technically when, when a speaker, uh, when a person speaks, his microphone signal is picked up, sent to the mixer, uh, back to the amplifier and through the loudspeaker it plays back. Again, this microphone, uh, you know, uh, picks up the signal. It goes back, back and forth, uh, you know, uh, having a vicious cycle, and it it might destroy uh, uh, the system. So it is very important that you know uh, this this particular out of control uh, howling sound or the squealing sound uh, has to be broken. Ha you know, has to be stopped. So it is usually by uh, you know turning the levels of the system down or you know having any feedback uh, suppression algorithm in place. So gain before feedback. So gain before feedback uh, is just as we discussed about feedback is defined as how much loud uh, you can go uh, with, a, with a particular system or, or the amplifier levels before uh, the system goes into a feedback loop. So this will technically give you, uh, you know, sufficient gain without causing feedback. And uh, you know you can always know that you know going beyond this particular level will will make the system go into a feedback loop, which is uh, you know not recommended at all. So moving on to sound reinforcement and voice lift. So what is sound reinforcement? The so sound reinforcement system is is basically designed to amplify the sound to a particular level. You know that compensates. Uh, uh, for the fact that some listeners, you know, some listeners sitting inside a room cannot hear uh, the speaker's audio or the, uh, the person's audio because of the distance factor. So the room might be very big or uh, the room will be uh, having ambient noise, uh, you know, due to various factors. So uh, that's where you, uh, where you have to employ a sound reinforcement system and that particular distance is being compensated by the additional uh, level in in audio. But you know, uh, when you talk about voice lift, voice lift is generally, uh, you know, uh, in, in spaces where, say for example, in some sp uh, some uh, meeting rooms, you have uh, a longer table. And, you know, one end of the a person sitting at one end of the table can listen to the uh, person who is sitting at the other uh, end of the table. And, uh, you know, his speech level is okay, but, you know, still an amount of strain is required to to properly understand what the other person is speaking. So a voice list system is actually, uh, you know, um, uh, bringing the listener closer by by adding, you know, some gain and uh, restoring some of the lost speech level. So it is the minimum amount of acoustical gain that is required to deliver intelligibility. So in a, in a properly uh, tuned voice list system, you can, you know, you can hear the father's talker clearly without even realizing that the system is turned on. So it's a minor boost or a, or a, or a strategic boost only. So, uh, you know, you can see that in some voice lift system, typically uh, some microphones and loudspeakers can be arranged in a mix minus kind of ar ar arrangement. And, uh, you know, uh, mix minus is, is, is actually, uh, you are preventing some microphone uh, signals to go in, 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 in some uh, uh, speaker channels. So that you know the feedback is is avoided. So mix minus often uh, prevents echoes or feedbacks in in a sound reinforcement uh, system. So you need to have uh, something like a mixing console or a you know a matrix mixer to to have uh, a mix minus scenario in place. Uh, and multiple channels are required in both input and output scenario. So. Uh, Moving on, uh, we will be discussing more in depth on how uh, show products can support you uh, in, in such scenarios and how to overcome or manage or limit uh, various challenges. And also like we have, uh, uh, we can, we can uh, you know, guide you on how to uh, fit sure products into various applications like AV conferencing or more structured conferencing scenarios and all. So we'll be discussing that in, in more details. We have solutions for wired, wireless, uh, then we have software solutions, we have conference solutions. All of that we'll be discussing uh, in our future webinars, which are planned for uh, uh, next month. And, uh, you know, please uh, join us for our upcoming webinars.
So having said that, I I hand the uh, floor over to Ritin. So he'll be taking you through the rest of the modules. Uh, thank you for your patience and uh, please uh, uh, let me know if you have any questions in the chat window. Thank you. Thanks, Anish. Uh, thanks for sharing the knowledge on the audio basics for our listeners, especially the IT professionals, uh, those who are attending this webinar today. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Ritin. Um, I'm a senior application engineer from Shure. Uh, I, I work with Anish uh, and supports the systems uh, team in, in, in Dubai, Middle East and Africa. So, um, of course, this uh, the session what was uh, delivered right now was uh, already delivered before in our first webinar. So those who have attended before, uh, it's a good refresher for them, as the webinar is focused for IT professionals. So hope these knowledge will help them to understand audio. Um, in past, uh, if you know, whenever any big installation was happening, the SIs were appointing one resident engineer, AV engineer, to manage the installation. It is still happening, but as you know, AV is converging with IT, and most of the AV devices are network compatible. You find network RJ45 port in most of the AV devices. So now, IT is responsible to manage the AV installation. So without further ado, let's move to our topic, the merging of AV and ID. Yeah. And if time allows, um, I'm going to keep one surprise demo for you guys. So hopefully uh, we'll finish fast and then we'll cover a uh, demo. So stay tuned for the session at the end. So <laughs> video and audio conferencing has evolved rapidly in recent years, as you know, expanding beyond ex standalone hardware system towards software and network solutions. So Video and audio conferencing is not only about the room where you will be having a dedicated codec and a hardware and you do the call. New generations, new, new expectation. A smartphone advancement and social media are changing the way we communicate. Younger generation expect technology to work instantly and effortlessly at the touch of a button. Mobility is essential these days, right? And it's not uncommon to have a conversation while one or multiple participants are traveling. Everybody wants to have the access of the technology with their smartphone. So very important, new expectation and need to fulfill that. The workplace itself is changing too, right? The increase in global collaboration means that video conferencing and web collaboration tools have become an essential part of everyday business. Meeting room of today must be flexible, efficient as well able to support variety of devices, meeting styles and callers. So these developments have made audio an important business decisions with ongoing consequences. First one is the user experience or perception by the users. Stable, high quality audio enhances the perception of the call. Perhaps most critically when a potential client is on the far end, right? You don't want to mess up with the system uh, if any important client is at the far end. You want to have the effective communication. Second is the productivity. Meeting uh, are most productive and collaborative when each person is heard and feels like an equal member of the discussion. Audio interruptions, background noises, and hard to hear speech can be distracting and can, can easily lead to disengagement. People distract very easily. So those kind of uh, distractions should be avoided to improve the productivity. And lastly is the health and well-being. The overall health and well-being of employ employees improves when the audio is clear and intelligible, which reduces listening fatigue and exhaustion. To give you a very good example, consider you're having a room and uh, uh, you have a nice large display and video conference devices, but if the audio has not been considered and there are just a couple of microphones in the room and the call is going on. So the far end can have difficulties to listen because the room is not having su sufficient audio uh, insulation, microphone system that can affect the far end listener. They will not be able to understand. They will be uh, finding difficulty to understand 
what was said they will start joining the dot and they will guess they will start doing the guesswork which affects the productivity and if you have to manage to run these kind of conferences every day imagine how much frustrated you're going to be at the end which affects your health and well-being so having quality audio is a common goal now let's talk a little about the digital audio so what is digital audio uh, digital audio is nothing but it converts analog signal to digital data it's it's all about digital approximation of analog signal so in this slide as you can see the red line over here is showing analog signal and the blue dots are the digital approximation which offers you the digital signal of the analog signal and digital signal depends on two things first is the sampling frequency sampling frequency is how often a sample is taken and bit depth is how many bits are assigned to each sample so higher the sampling frequency higher the bit depth offers the better sound quality and consumes more bandwidth right so example of uh, one of the sound signal what you can see is 16 bit 44.1 kilohertz which is very common in cd quality now talking about the benefits of network audio network audio is growing technology that is helping to meet new demands in teleconferencing and here are a few of the benefits of adding network audio to your organization first one is the network audio uh, Network audio like Dante can coexist on a corporate network using the same cabling and infrastructure implemented for the data and services, including security measures already in place by the IT department. Network audio allows for remote monitoring and troubleshooting of the audio signal and devices. This is especially useful for organizations with centralized support teams or multiple different meeting locations. And the lastly, network audio provides option for routing and control of the audio signal without degradation. So that's all uh, the benefit of having network audio. So as, as this, this webinar is mostly focused on IT professional, so IT professionals are having common concern. So let's understand the concern about audio on the network. Experience varies among professionals, right? As we highlighted earlier, modern teleconferencing combines AV and IT practices into a unified solution, right? However, there is still a range of experience and understanding among professionals when it comes to integrating audio on the network. During this course, we will discuss audio integration from an IT and system supports perspective, where audio is one of many tools that must be supported to power the organization. So what are these common concerns? So there are three common concerns to anticipate about audio, net, networked audio. ID people are having these questions. When you go in front of them and AV professional goes uh, in front of um, IT professional, so they are having three common concerns and which are fair to be asked. So first one, will it work on our network? Second is how will it affect the bandwidth performance? And third one, is it secure? If I allow you, is it not going to affect my uh, the security of the network infrastructure? So let's talk about all these common concerns one by one. The first one is, and this is most obvious, will it work on our network? So the audio networking solution implemented by Shure is Dante, which is developed by Audinet. So we use Dante. Dante, which stands for Digital Audio Network through Ethernet, is an audio over IP protocol that leverages existing IT networking standard. Dante delivers uncompressed, multi-channel, low-latency digital audio over a standard Ethernet network using Layer 3 IP packets. Dante works with the standard Ethernet equipment and off-the-shelf components found in typical data networks. Right, so it, it helps and it is definitely going to work on the network, right? Now, this diagram is an example. So here is the quick snapshot of audio network. Each room uses a local switch to connect microphone, video cameras, monitor, loudspeakers, and laptop together in a unified AV system. Rooms are then connected to main network for remote management and troubleshooting. 
similar to printers throughout a building, right? For audio routing in Dante setting, use Dante controller, the free configuration software for Dante. Like other data network, Dante uses logical routes instead of physical point to point connections. So the network can be expanded and reconfigured at any time from a computer. You get that flexibility. Now, the second concern is how will Dante affect bandwidth performance, right? So let's quickly review what bandwidth is in networking. And we already have discussed in our previous webinar, but let's have a quick recap. Um, bandwidth is defined as the amount of data that can flow through the network in a given time frame. It is common means misconception that bandwidth is simply the speed of your network, which is not right. It is more accurate to think of bandwidth as the amount of water flowing to a water pipe. Simple uh, understanding a wider pipe allows more water to pass, where a smaller pipe would need more time to pass the same amount of water. Similarly, more bandwidth allows more data to pass through a two at a time. So bandwidth is measured in a bit per second. Gigabit Ethernet has a bandwidth of one gigabit or 1000 megabits per second, right? Now let's talk about the Dante, Dante audio bandwidth requirement. With the network being so critical to the modern tool sets, it is no wonder that bandwidth is such a concern, right? The good news is that Dante traffic is bandwidth efficient, building four channels into a shared data packets called a Dante flow. Dante audio is unicast by default, as we discussed, meaning each channel has only one sender and one receiver. Dante is stable and can be reliably calculated ahead of time of planning and preparation. Let's look at this number for gigabit network. The recommended network rate for Dante is here. Have a look. For four channels, this is just 0.6% of the network bandwidth. For 16 channel, which is 24 Mbps and takes around 2.4% of the network. And if you're having 64 channels of audio, it will take around 9.6% of the bandwidth. And 64 is 96 Mbps, for example, yeah? Now, talking about next concern, which usually comes from IT, is it secure? To business and organization all over the world, security is top priority. There is no doubt about it. Nobody wants to have the security breach. The fact is that, any point, any point, end point, regardless of its value or complexity, is a security liability to the organization, customers, or innocent member of the public. An end point is any device that is connected to the network and sends or receive data. End point are targeted in hacking attacks and exploited as a way to access other more important data on the network. Example of Endpoints includes like Wi-Fi devices, printers, thermostats, network audio systems, et cetera, for meetings, right? So I'm gonna give you a, a couple of data breach examples. Yeah, so there are a few examples we can learn from over the years that explains the importance of secure uh, endpoints. So banks, so uh, just sharing one uh, incidence in 2011, a multinational bank was attacked by hackers that exploited a security oversight on the company's customer facing website. Once in, hackers were able to access other databases with personal and financial records of up to 360,000 users. Isn't this scary? Home retailers. So another example was in 2013, a large home retailer experienced a security breach when hackers access the network through an HVAC system endpoint, resulting in a loss of millions of dollars and an individual loss of public opinion as well. Another example was in 2015, a popular fast food chain was broken into when their third party supported ordering system was breached. Hackers were then able to obtain credit card information of their customers. So, these things can happen if your network is not secure. So that it makes sense to have the IT people with these concerns because they want security 
with of their infrastructure so talking about sure uh, we are having quite good security features in sure products so as said the same concern applies to devices used for audio networking so with while no networking is completely secure sure embedded security features can be combined with network security measures like device access control and network partition, uh, partitioning to create a multi-layered solution let's quickly review these security features so first one as256 two network audio encryption uses as256 bit of encryption to encrypt the audio signal over dante between two sure devices each device must have the same encryption passphrase to pass the audio. And when you're gonna have our next to next webinar where we're gonna talk about our ceiling array and table array microphone and all the network solution, we will show you how exactly you can enable AES 256 bit encryption in the network. It is gonna come in the next uh, webinar session. For wireless stream microphones, uh, the signal is encrypted between the transmitter and receiver even if it's wireless, using either AES 128 bit of encryption or 256 bit of encryption. It depends on the system what you are using. For example, Microflex Wireless offers AES 256 bit of encryption. Our MXCW Microflex Complete Wireless offers AES 128 bit of encryption. And lastly, the embedded devices web application can be password protected to ensure that only certain people have access to the app. It is important for the, the commissioning engineers and all, or the IT people. If somebody configured the system, everything is good, working well, you don't want your good friend come in and, uh, and, and then destroy and con uh, spoil the whole configuration, right? So for that, our WebGUI offers the WebGUI uh, passwords. And with the help of password only, you can access the device to control, configure, and monitor. So let's quickly recap. On the basic answers for the IT people, first one is, will it work on our network? Yes. Dante uses existing IT networking standard and off-the-shelf component found in most data network. Second is, will it affect bandwidth performance? It will, but not significantly. Dante is efficient. Four channel of uncompressed audio is just half of 1% of a gigabit network. Third one is, is it secure? While no network is totally secure, two products can be isolated on a VLAN behind a firewall like any other endpoint. Additionally, some sure devices include encryption and password access to increase security. So hope these answers will satisfy the IT people and they can be comfortable using the, the network solution in, in, in their existing infrastructure. Now, let's go to the next topic, talking about best practices and recommendations. So there are a couple of best practices and recommendation like separating audio devices on a VLAN, enabling sure network audio encryption, limiting bandwidth of network audio, using an isolated network air gap, and testing security with a penetration test. So let's go through with each points. Separating audio device on a VLAN with a firewall. To recommend securing audio devices like any other endpoint on your network. A virtual local area network or VLAN partition the network into segment that can be isolated and managed independently behind a firewall. This provides an important barrier so that in the event of a rogue devices or attack on the endpoint, the rest of the systems and data would not be impacted. This practice is widely adopted for grouping common endpoints such as computers, AV equipments, and printer. So that could be one recommendation. Second is enabling sure network audio encryption. Turn on sure network audio encryption for additional security to audio digital over a Dante network. Both sure devices, the sender and the receiver, must have network audio encryption enabled with the same passphrase. And you will learn this when we are gonna do our next webinar in order to pass the audio, right? And simply use the device web application to enable the encryption. Enter a strong passphrase with a max, with a mixture of alphanumeric characters, as you see here, um, and use Dante controller to make the audio routes. If the passphrase is different on one of the device, you cannot make channels route 
or pass audio. You have to have the same passphrase in transmitter and receiver. Note that AS67 must be disabled for encryption to work. That is another thing what you need to consider when you use AS67. Network audio encryption is currently supported on our many uh, network devices like MXA910, any USB, MXA310, NE4N, E300, NE4Out, and NE22. Now, next one is limiting network audio bandwidth. Follow this checklist to make sure the setup is optimized for bandwidth performance. First, for routing and Dante setting, use Dante controller, the free configuration software for Dante. Dante audio channels are unicast by default so that each channel has one sender and one receiver. Next, make sure your switch supports quality of service. We discussed about this in the previous webinar. So our quality of service is basically, Dante uses quality of service to prioritize clock sync and audio traffic over the network traffic. That is less time sensitive. And the lastly, you can minimize bandwidth concern by lowering the number of channels on the network. If you wanna know more about this, more in-depth information on bandwidth was provided already in the networking of AV Professional webinar last week. Please feel free to contact us to get the recording and we'll share the recording with you guys. Right, now, the next recommendation is using a physically isolated near network air gap. For increased security, but with fewer audio networking options, you can design the room to be physically isolated from the main network, which is mostly getting done in most of the AV installation, but you are, you are gonna have prime and key uh, end user or the customer who wants to incorporate everything all together. So this thing is called air gap since there is no network connection between the audio system and the main network. As mentioned, this limits the benefit of Dante taking away remote monitoring and control from uh, help or service desk, right? However, you can still use the benefit Dante's by connecting your room system using minimal cabling, flexible routing, and low latency audio within the room. It is very important to keep in mind that even an air gap is not 100% secure and it is best practice to use true network audio encryption and other IT security measures for any AV system. Now the fourth one is testing security with penetration test. So pen test, uh, let's talk about this. It is very important to check all the endpoints for security and how to check that. A common method is penetration or pen test. A pen test is a simulated cyber attack on the system to test the levels of security and identify vulnerabilities that could be breached. It could also be conducted to validate new and equipments or systems that an organization planning to implement. Yeah, the scope and details of pen test are dependent on the goals and complexity of the simulation. Tests range from a signal hardware devices tested overnight in an isolated lab environment to a month long simulation or attacks on full system in real environment. Typically, the test results are not shared publicly since security is critical to public relations and could invite unwanted attacks. Right, so that could be one option if uh, you are more concerned about the security. Now, just one more thing to discuss when you are having Dante, you have to have the special consideration on the switch side. So we recommend to have gigabit switch. You should have managed switch to monitor each individual port. Switch with power over Ethernet is required for sure network microphone solution. Avoid green Ethernet switches, uh, triple E feature. Uh, it is not recommended for Dante enabled devices and use shielded cable. So these all are the special consideration for Dante. So that's all about it in, in terms of talking about this course. And as I said that if time allows, I'm gonna give you a surprise demo. So uh, let's have the demo and then we will, we will come to the question Q&A session, okay? So for that, I need to go to the next slide and I will explain what exactly we are gonna do. Um, we'll be having a couple of polls in this uh, this 
session and we will ask for your reply as well okay so let's have a demo so what exactly we have prepared let's look on it so this is my setup at my home office this is how it looks i am having six different types of microphone in my home office today i have made my living room as home office it's hard to deal with my wife but yeah what to do <laughs> so uh, over here you can see um, I'm having stealing array microphone at my ceiling to an MXA 910 and other type of microphone. What you can see is uh, my laptop is having built-in microphone. Um, I'm using Shure SRH 145M headphone, which is also having built-in microphone. I have one MXA 310 table array microphone. Right now, what you're hearing is Shure MV5, which is placed here, Shure MV5 Motive microphone. I am having webcam that also comes with built-in microphone, right? So all these things are here in my home office. So I'm gonna give you a good experience of all these different microphones and explain how exactly it sounds and what you feel that can be shared with the comment section, right? And most important, as in this current situation, I have hand sanitizer as well to use every now and then, right? That's most important, guys. Okay. So let me go to the schematic part. So webinar setup, what I have, I have my laptop that's having built-in microphone. I have Shure SRH145M headphone connected with 3.5 mm jack. Webcam, which is connected by USB. Tour Motive MV5, that's also connected by USB. I have to MXA310 table array microphone with one cardioid polar pattern pointing on me, connected with network switch. And I also have Intellimix P300 audio DSP, which is taking the audio from MXA310. And Intellimix P300 DSP offers you USB connection to connect with your laptop. Also, Shure MXA910 ceiling array microphone. That's on my ceiling at 2.7 meter of height. Uh, the audio from the microphone is going to Intellimix P300 DSP, and of course, the audio is to USB to my laptop. I've configured two loops. One is pointing at me, and the second one is on my couch. So I'm during the demo, I will move to my couch and give you experience how exactly it sounds. Of course, all these microphones are not for home office, but there is no harm in showing the audio demo if I can from here, right? So Mostly the 310 and 910 are for meeting room, conference room, and boardroom scenario where you want more flexibility, uh, but at least you can hear it with this. So this is the setup. Now, if you remember, if you know that recently in ISC, we launched our new Intellimix uh, room software DSP. So you can replace Intellimix P300 with uh, Intellimix room software DSP and the software DSP can be installed in the same PC where you're going to have the software-based conferencing codec like Skype, BlueJeans, uh, uh, Link, or Zoom calls. And it is license-based, so uh, it just, it's just the matter of having the license. We're having different types of license. And the audio from 910 and 310 can go directly to Intellimix room via Dante. So this is a kind of plan B setup, what you can have for software-based conferencing systems. So let's move to the current setup, what I have. Um, over here, I'm talking about uh, uh, Intellimix P300. So I'm gonna start with the first demo, which is the built-in microphone. So uh, let me change the setup over here and then I come back. Okay, so I'm back. So right now what you're hearing is the built-in microphone of the laptop. Of course, the, the microphone is tiny and it is omnidirectional. So it is gonna have a kind of a, a lot of low end and any kind of ambience will be picked up. The, the sound is gonna be slightly heavy. And uh, this is how it sounds. 
uh, it can accept unnecessary ambience of the room. Uh, if it is just for uh, one participant or two participant, you can use this and it will be okay. Uh, but consider you are having a large crowd, then you need to look on plan B. So this is how it sounds when, when you have a built-in microphone from the laptop. Now let's move to the next one. So I'm going to change my microphone to to SRH 145 m So this is how it is going to sound. Uh, this is Shure SRH 145 m Now this microphone is closer to my face, uh, very near, and it is having a kind of limited range to pick up the voice. So it is going to avoid unnecessary ambience of the room and it will be directional, uh, give you more intelligibility, more presence on your voice. So that is okay for one talker, but now if consider you're having more than one talker, uh, you are having the limitation, right? By the way, the, the level what I have kept for all different microphone is almost same. So uh, you will hear exactly what's coming into the conferencing codec. Also remember that this is a blue jeans call. So in blue jeans, um, uh, it is also having its own compressor and of course it's on the call is through internet so some kind of manipulation is still going to happen with the audio but at the end this is how it is going to sound so this is srh145m now i will move back to webcam um, built in microphone for that i need to just be disconnected for one second i'll come back Okay, so I'm sure you're hearing me. So right now what you're hearing is the webcam microphone. Webcam microphone again uh, it is, uh, I'm, I'm almost 60 to 70 centimeter of distance from the, the webcam and the, the microphone is uh, of course gonna pick a lot of ambience. Even if my room is very quiet, no sound, uh, no ambient noise, but still you will listen, the sound is a little loud and uh, slightly heavy. Um, so this is how it is going to sound. And this is what you can have with the webcam. Of course, different webcams can have different performance, but right now, uh, the one what I have is going to sound like this. Yeah, it's connected with the USB you're hearing and you can see me as well. So this is how it sounds. Yeah, and we will we'll talk about this when during the Q&A session to understand if you were able to notice the difference or no. Now let's move to the next microphone. Okay, so now I am speaking from Shure MV5. It's connected via USB. As the beginning of the webinar, we already explained Shure MV5 is having DSP mode. It is having three DSP mode, uh, speech, flat, and instrument. So right now what you're hearing is uh, speech mode. I'm almost 60 centimeter of distance from the microphone, and this is how it sounds. The microphone is having other modes, so I'm gonna change just to show. Sir. This is the instrument mode of Shure MV5. So this is how it sounds. Of course, it is going to be slightly low because musical instruments are going to have a lot of uh, different frequencies and the, all will feed in and it is always going to be louder than the voice. So to compensate that, the lower uh, output from the instrument mode, and I will change to flat mode. So right now it is the flat mode. I'll go back to the voice mode, speech mode. So this is how it sounds. Great microphone. It's just a matter of connecting with one USB and you're ready to go plug and play solution. So perfect. But the thing is now, if you are considering the microphone to have for the large room, for home setup, perfect. This microphone is perfect. You connect, you start using it, two or three participants can join it. But now let's talk about the larger room where you want to have more control on your voice and the audio. So for that, I'm gonna move to the next microphone. Let me do this. I'll be disconnected for a second and then come back.
Okay, so right now what you're hearing is our MXA310 table array microphone. There is one polar pattern assigned on me. The beauty of this microphone is you can move your head, it's still gonna have the consistent pickup. It can offer you four polar patterns, so you can have nice 360 degree of coverage with similar intelligibility and it is having multiple polar pattern depending on the seating arrangement you can change that so single cat 5e cable connection and our p300 is offering usb to connect with the laptop so this is how it is going to sound right now let's move to the next one which is going to be the ceiling array microphone right and as said i'm having two lobes one lobe is on me and second one is on my couch so i will show you that so let's move to the 910 okay so this is mxa 910 ceiling array microphone uh, if you install at 2.7 meter of height you can have nine meter of coverage diameter so i'm pretty much sure 70 or 80 percent of my living room will easily cover with this microphone so during the meeting if i don't need to participate i just simply go to my couch and assign one lobe over there and i just sit and relax and listen to the meeting so this is how i do my day-to-day -day meetings nowadays so right now what you're hearing is the loop number one i will also show you how exactly the loop behaves okay so i'm here i guess you can see uh, you can see this so and the good thing, if you see here, I have bypassed the IntelliMix and bypassed the EQ. So I'm not even equalizing the audio. It's just like raw audio from the microphone. And this is how it is sounding. Um, now, talking about uh, 910. So um, I'm just gonna show you by moving to my another seat and uh, Okay, so I'm here on lobe number two. If you can see the lobe is also having autofocus feature. So the lobe automatically adjusts itself to get the consistent voice. So I'm speaking from lobe number two, sitting, I'm relaxing and I can be the part of the meeting as well. So this is how it is gonna sound. You will get the consistent pickup for the larger coverage. Yeah, so that's all about it. Uh, to show you the demo, hopefully that clarifies what exactly you can have uh, uh, with the different types of the microphone. So, okay. So that's, a lot. that's all about it. If you have any question and you understood uh, the demo, you were able to experience different audio quality, uh, feel free to, type on comment section.